Hello new or potential new Darktable user. This next series of four videos will be all about getting you up to speed with Darktable 4.2. Let's go. Hi and welcome to episode 124 of Understanding Darktable. My name is Bruce Williams. I've been doing this channel for about four years now, since 2018, been using Darktable since 2016. Don't claim to know everything there is to know about Darktable, but I will do my best to get you up to speed. I am assuming that you are coming to Darktable from some other piece of software. 95% of you are probably coming from Adobe Lightroom, in which case Darktable is going to look very familiar. What I want to do in this next series of videos, these newbies guide videos, is cover some concepts rather than process, if that makes sense. Just get you up to speed with the way Darktable is laid out and how it functions and what it does differently. Every piece of software has its quirks. Let's talk about what Darktable is and what Darktable isn't. It is, as I just mentioned, very similar to Adobe Lightroom. It is designed as a raw development engine. Doesn't mean you can't process JPEGs, of course you can. Uh, but it's designed for working with raw files. And it is also a library management tool. So it allows you to do color ratings, star ratings, add keywords, all that sort of stuff, as well as give you very advanced search filtering and sorting tools as well. What it is not is a multi-layer or compositing program. So don't think of it like Photoshop or GIMP. It is designed for you to work on one image at a time. And whilst we're talking about one image at a time, no, you cannot clone from one image to another image. For that sort of thing, like I said, you would need to go to GIMP or Affinity Photo or Photoshop or something like that. It is also not a destructive image editor. So don't think that you are going to open up an image, create some changes to that image, and then find a save button which will overwrite the image file. Not how it works. Everything you do in Darktable is non-destructive. It means it can be undone later. It also means that if you create any changes to an image and you want to save that, you have to export as a new image file. All right, so let's have a look at the light table view. In this first video, we're just going to talk about some basic concepts. I'm not going to run through the entirety of what's in the light table view. That will actually be in the next video. And the final two videos will be in the dark room, which is where you do all of your image processing. But for now, let's talk about the concept of importing images into Darktable. Darktable will not create copies of your images unless you tell it to. So if you use add to library, that assumes that you already have a folder structure on your hard drive where your images live and you simply want Darktable to, you know, create a thumbnail database of all of those images so that you can then view all of those images and decide which ones you want to process and that sort of thing. So if you've taken the memory card out of your camera, put it in a USB card reader and attached it to your laptop or desktop machine, you don't want to use Add to Library because the memory card is not the location you are going to want to view your images from all of the time. In that instance, you would use copy and import because that will, as it says on the tin, copy the images from where they are to some new destination and then import those into your Darktable database. So let's have a look at that in practice. I have deliberately removed a few images from my catalog so that I can now use the add to library function to import them where they are. Now, in the top left hand corner here, we have places. These are different mount points on your system. They could be hard drives, 
could be USB thumb drives, whatever. In this instance, I'm pointing to my photos drive. And within that, I am pointing to my family photos folder and then my 2022 folder. And I just want to import the images from the 30th of December. As we can see, there's eight or nine images there. And there are three checkboxes across the top. Select only new images or new pictures. So that's saying to Darktable, if I'm pointing to a folder where some of the images have already been imported, then only import the new ones. Makes common sense, right? Next up, recursive directory. If I was pointing to my 2022 folder, within which there are, you know, a hundred other subfolders, then recursive directory says to Darktable, don't just look in this parent folder, look in any other folders which might exist within this folder. So, you know, search deeper than just this folder. And ignore JPEG images. So if, you know, I, I tend to shoot RAW plus JPEG in camera because I shoot with a Sony a7 III, which has the ability to Bluetooth the JPEGs from the camera to my phone while I'm out in the field, which is really handy if I want to quickly, you know, send something to social media. So I shoot RAW plus JPEG just for that feature. But when I get home, I don't want to import the JPEGs. I only want to import my RAW files. So I would tick the ignore JPEG images checkbox as well. Once you've done that, click on add to library and Darktable has now added those yep, nine images to Darktable for me. All right, let's look at the copy and import dialog box as well. As you can see, very similar to the add to library dialog box. We've got places up here in the top left hand corner. I've just grabbed a random memory card out of my camera bag, mounted it in a card reader to my system. It appears as the 32 gig volume. I've got a DCIM folder, which is where my still images are stored. We will just select three files. And down here where it says naming rules, we can expand that with the little arrow there. The base directory naming pattern. That is essentially saying, what is the parent folder into which you want to put these images? I am sending it to my photos slash test shots folder. We can then create a subdirectory naming pattern. So we're not just putting them into the test shots folder. We can use all different sorts of variables and plain text to create a subdirectory pattern within that parent folder. In this instance, I'm using X of year and then a forward slash to create a child folder where the child folder is X of year hyphen X of month hyphen X of day. So it'll end up with you know, in this instance, 2020-08-30. Okay, and keep the original file name. So don't rename the files when you import them. Go click on copy and import. And there are the three images that I have just copied from the memory card to a folder on my hard drive in the test shots folder. And if we were to go over and look at that particular folder, we can see 829. There are those three images. Now I know what you're thinking. On the copy and import dialogue, the metadata suggested that these images were shot on the 30th, but now, or, or sorry, within my folder structure, they've actually been put into a folder 829. That is due to a time synchronization thing that I've got going on my computer and it's just something I need to deal with that I haven't dealt with. So don't be too concerned by that. All right. So that is getting images into Darktable. Okay. Now, while we are talking about the folder structure, you will notice when you import files into Darktable that they end up with another file sitting alongside your original image file and these files will have the same name with .xmp appended to the end of them. Now, some people get a little bit perturbed about these XMP files cluttering up their file system. 
I would say, one, grow to love them because they contain a lot of information which is really handy, and two, they don't take up a lot of space. As you can see, they're only a couple of kilobytes each. Excuse my dog panting in the background. What do these files contain? Well, so I've added train as a keyword to all three of these images. Well, let's go through and we'll rate that as a one star, that is a two star, no, not you. You as two stars and you as three stars. And let's go, we'll make you yellow and we'll make you red. So we've applied some star ratings and some color ratings. No, you were meant to be yellow as well. There we go. So these two are yellow, rated one star, rated two stars. This one's a red color label and rated three stars. All of that information, the keywords, the star ratings, the color labels are stored in the XMP files. And why I love those XMP files is because if your database ever gets corrupted, you could lose all of that information. But by having the XMP files with that information in there, I could even go to a whole new computer, install Darktable, copy all of these, you know, I could just copy the entire folder even, onto a new computer with Darktable, go add to library, and all of that information comes back. And just to prove that, I will remove all of these images from Darktable, they're now gone. We'll now go add to library, we will import them again in their current location and look at that. They've still got their star ratings, their color labels, and they all still have the keyword train attached to them. All right, let's have a look at the preferences. The preferences are accessed via the cog icon in the upper right hand corner there. That will bring up the preferences dialog box and you've got a whole bunch of tabs down the left hand side that'll allow you to see different parts of the preferences. Something Darktable does that I've not seen in any other software and I absolutely love is the idea of these white dots. That tells you that that particular preference has been changed from the default. I love that idea. So I can immediately see these are the things I've changed away from the original default settings. Uh, we can go through and look at, you know, importing, how we work with files in the light table, things that happen in the dark room, processing defaults, etc., etc. You get the idea. I'm not going to dig deep into the preferences because you can work through them at your own pace and work out what things you want to change or don't want to change as you see fit. Now, whilst I am going to primarily over the course of these four videos focus on the light table view and the dark room view, because that is where you will spend 95%, maybe even more of your time, dark table also offers you a map view, which is really handy. You can add images to points on the map so that should you at any stage want to say, I want to look at all of my images from Portugal, you know, you can zoom in to different parts of the map and see where images were located, you know, where you were when you took those images. There is also a print option. However, it's showing nothing because my printer is turned off. And sadly, for Windows users, as far as I know, Printing is still not an option from the Windows version of Darktable. There's a whole backstory to that, which I won't go into right now. There is a very basic slideshow, which sadly, for the new user, how do you get out of it? Yeah, exactly, right? There's nothing on screen to tell you how to get out of the slideshow. I can press start and it tells me I'm at the end of my images, but it doesn't tell me how to get out. Press the escape key. Just a <laughs> horrible trap for young players. It will take you back to the light table view. Now the slideshow is very basic. There are no options for transitions. 
All you have is within the preferences, the ability to choose, I think it's in miscellaneous. Yeah, the duration for each image, that is it. Like I said, it is a very basic slideshow. And there is an option for tethering, but the list of cameras that are supported is quite limited. Uh, I would again suggest you do a Google search on dark table and tethering and that will show you which cameras are supported for shooting in a tethered mode. All right, people, I am going to leave that there for this episode. That's probably enough to melt your brain already, but we've got three more episodes to go. In the next episode, we will look at the light table view and how you can navigate that. Questions, comments, feedback, sing out down below, and I will catch you in the next one.